not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, as we, we've just seen. Because they do not, but they have not believed in the name of this God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light, and will not come into the light, and the fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by truth comes into the light, so they may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. You see there in verse 16, whoever, verse 18, whoever, whoever, verse 21, 20, everyone, verse 21, whoever. You see, John's now not speaking of the world holistically anymore, is he? He's starting to distinguish between two howevers, whoever's, whoever does not believe and who does believe. The two herbs. I mean, which one do you come under? I mean, that, that's the ultimate question in life, isn't it? Which one do you come under? Do you believe that Jesus is God's Son? And who do you say He is? And, and what do your actions say who Jesus is? So let's look at the, the first whoever. Whoever number one. Whoever does not believe in Jesus God's Son. Whoever doesn't believe in Jesus, God's Son is condemned and will perish. Our condemnation remains if we don't believe in Jesus, verse 18. Because like the Israelites when they were in the wilderness, we have disobeyed God. We have complained against God's good provision and, and we deserve His just condemnation. Justice will mean that we receive Condemnation. We will see the condemnation that we deserve for our rebellion. And those who don't believe in God's Son, verse 18, stand condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. I mean, being in the need already of a Saviour before God's Son comes on his mission, the person that they compound their guilt by not believing. In the name of God's Son when He comes. So there's no need to wait for that final judgment day. But it will come. The person who doesn't believe in the Father's one and only Son stands condemned already, and God's wrath remains on him. Which we'll see in verse 36 of this chapter. See, sometimes we wonder, don't we? Why, why would someone refuse to, to look up to Christ and be saved? Why, why wouldn't they? They can look and live. Well, John, he tells us the answer, doesn't he? Verses 19 and 21. The answer is, we love the darkness. It's our natural state. We're in the darkness and nothing terrifies us more than, than the, the appearance of, of light. John says... They prefer to live without the knowledge of God. And the reason, the fundamentally moral reason, their deeds were evil. They were not living, willing to live by the truth. They value their, their pride more than their integrity. They value their, their prejudices more than repentant faith. But as we saw in, in John 1, 4, Jesus is introduced as the light of the world. The light shines into the darkness. But people love the darkness because their deeds were evil. That's our nature, isn't it? We are children of darkness. And it's against the nature of children of darkness to come into light. Because they know what the light represents. And that there will be exposure. And humiliation. You might notice that often I'm doing this, I'm turning my microphone on and off. It's because I can't really see. And I don't want to be caught 
singing and drowning you out with my bad voice. That I would be exposed. That would be humiliating. See, we all had things, don't we? To rather others not know. Rather the things that kept hidden. Not exposed out there for everyone to see. Especially us. Those in the darkness don't want to come into the light. They don't want others to know what they're really like. And what's more, they don't want to actually admit to themselves what they are really like. Our natural human condition is so strong that we just experience this gravitational pull into this black hole of, of sin's darkness. Our pit instincts might mean long for the, the stars, but our evil desire that our sin means that we're attracted to hiding and being in the dark, away from the light. It's the light it's so uncomfortable. It, it reveals our darkness to ourselves, and most scarily, it reveals it to God. We will not come into the light for fear that our deeds will be exposed, verse 12. Because that will bring shame and conviction. The result being condemned by God and not receiving eternal life. This is whoever number one. Whoever number two, on the other hand, despite the fact that they've disobeyed God, complain against God's good provision as we saw before and that we rightly deserve the condemnation. If we look to the snake on the pole, the, the one who has been condemned for us, the Lord Jesus, whoever believes in, in Him, then it is not condemned, but instead has eternal life. Life now, life forever, Life with Jesus. Those who, who look up to Him, they will not perish for the, because of their sins. And they won't face eternal condemnation. I mean, Jesus, He's just the best news, isn't He? For everyone. The best news that anyone has ever heard. Jesus, as light, has come into the world. To the world to save us. Belief in Jesus saves people from being condemned. It means that we're, we're given eternal life. Believing is not just recognising who Jesus is, but actually following Jesus. Obeying Jesus' command to follow Christ is to live by the truth, verse 21. This expression, live by the truth, that means to, to act faithfully, to act honourably. The person who acts in this way happily comes into the light. I mean, there's no reason not to. When we live by the truth, we come into light so that it may be seen by what is done, is done through God. It gives glory to God. I mean, and that's what we desire. We follow Christ. So are you following Jesus by living in the light? 